You ready to go hunting? Hmm? <laughs> Maybe not? What about you? No? Okay. You don't take dogs deer hunting. Hello Blue is training to be a retriever right now. Aren't you? Beauty. Hopefully everything behind me is nice and tidy because I got told off by my wife for the last video where everything behind me was a mess. But we were in the middle of a home renovation so please forgive us, alright? That was my fault, okay? But I took your advice, this time going with the camo hat and not the, the one with the, the patch on the front. Some people say that might be an issue. In my bag down there I've got a bunch of pine twigs and needles and a couple of oak branches and leaves from in the back and luckily my stand today is going to be in a pine tree in a patch of oaks so maybe that'll work we'll see hopefully fingers crossed obviously my original plan today was to hunt the morning after the cold front which i talked to some of you about uh but I woke up this morning my allergies were just killing me so couldn't get out of bed couldn't do it so I'm gonna have to do the next best thing which is hopefully hunt the evening after a cold front's come in it was cold last night everything this morning was covered in frost and ice my windshield was iced over so hopefully tonight the deer should still be moving but we'll see we'll see we'll go up there and we'll see if we can figure it out as you can see Got all my leaves in there with my hunting gear. Alright, we're ready to go. Definitely a lot cooler today than it has been on other days. Although it is starting to warm up a bit. But I can just feel the wind's a lot colder. Hence why I've got the hoodie on this time. As we go up there, so let's go.
There's that arrow. It's good blood. A lot of blood on that arrow. Looks good. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure I got him high double lung. I'm sure I did. That's the arrow. He dropped, so I'm gonna go find him. I've waited probably 10-15 minutes. He went down right there, so let's go. You can see where he slid down the hill. He didn't go far. What a blood here. And there he is. There he is. Here he is. He's either busted an antler or he never had another one. He's not huge, but that's my first ever deer. My first ever deer and hopefully many more to come. I gotta get this guy gutted. I'm losing light. I'm gonna get him on ice. That's what I'm gonna do, but obviously I can't show you that, so. <sighs> Success. Success. Oh, yes. Look at that, freezer full of meat. I don't know if you can see in here. I also have the hide, which I'm going to tan myself. I've got the antlers and the skull cap there to sort out. So there you go, there you have it. That's my first dip. Will you quit it? Hmm? Sorry about that, but yeah, my first deer ever, not just my first deer with a bow, but my first deer ever. I have to tell you, it feels, feels, it feels good. It does feel good. It is a sense of accomplishment. I mean, I've been out there all summer. I've been practicing with that bow all summer. I've been following these deer, tra tracking their movements, trying to figure them out. And I finally, I finally got one, Never, not to mention the fact that I've been out deer hunting for the past three, four years now, every year, and I've never even seen a deer, never even seen one, so for my first bow hunt to have a buck come in like that was just awesome. He's not a record breaker, he's not going to set any records, believe me, but it's the first and I couldn't ask for any more. And I have to tell you, sitting ground, the dinner table, we all went up to my in-laws last night, we all sat around. Had a nice meal, cooked up some of the venison from my deer, and there was a there was a real sense of accomplishment in it, and it just felt felt good. It felt right. Does that make sense? But I do have to tell you, at the time, I was shaking so much. I was so nervous. I'm sorry I couldn't get the the shot on camera, but I was like, I was trembling. You can probably see from that shot where I zoomed in, and you could see him, and I was shaking because he came across. Well, what happened, actually, like what happened was, as soon as I sat in the stand, a doe came in about 10 yards, and I was trying to, like, I didn't have my release out my bag, I didn't have my bag hung up, I didn't even have my arrows clipped in, so I was trying to get all that stuff, and she was still, like, stood there working underneath me, and she kept looking up at me, and I'd stop, and then I'd try and, like, slowly move it. I'd try and slowly move it get my stuff ready, get my arrows clipped in, and eventually she saw me. But that's one thing that I really I drilled at home in my head is, I was doing all that stuff up in the tree, and she didn't, she was upwind of me. And she kept looking up at me, and she was short, didn't know there was something there. But she didn't, she didn't run off, she didn't like take off, she sort of kept 
like mm, I'm not really sure and then eventually she started walking up and it wasn't until she got downwind of me that she went oh no and went took off so that's really drilled at home in my head all that scent stuff all the preparation doesn't matter what you do if you have if you don't have a good wind then you're not going to be successful if the deer are coming from downwind of you then you're going to have problems so the drilled at home in my head that good wind is key yeah so that happened and now then she spooked and i was like oh no that's the whole whole hunt down the drain you know because i yeah, like i said before i would have taken a doe i have a doe tag i would have been fine so i was sat there about an hour later i saw him coming up in front of me but he was going across the hill away from me as if he was going to come round downwind of me but i couldn't see because of the leaves and at first i thought it was a doe so I stood up, he's about 30 yards away at this point, picked up my bow, I'm stood there with my bow, and I'm watching him, and he's, again at this stage, I don't know it's a buck. He stood there, he's sort of eating, scratching around at acorns, and then he comes back down, he's still 30 yards away, and he starts moving back down in front of me. And then I see it's a buck, so now I'm like, oh my god, I'm shaking. And he's quite wide for a three point. Like, he looked much bigger from where I, from what I could see, plus at that point I was nervous and excited, so I'm stood there, and watching him, he works his way down and around, and then he stops, and he's kind of behind two trees, as you can see from the video, where I'm trying to zoom in, shaking, and I thought he'd seen me, and I'm stood with my bow, holding my bow, and my arm's getting tired, and it must be like 10 minutes before I realise, oh, he's he's... He's lying down, he's bedded down, he's bedded down 30 yards away from me and I'm watching him and he keeps looking up and looking around and he's just sat there chewing the cud or whatever and licking himself and I'm like, stood there for ages. So it probably, I don't know, maybe 15 minutes goes by before I'm like, I have to put my bow down, my, my arm is killing me. So I put it back on its hook and I'm sat there, well stood there at this point, I don't dare sit down and I'm rattling I'm shaking like crazy trying not to move I'm just not sure if he can see me or not whether he's spotted me figured me out and then about 20 minutes go by of me doing that leaf blower but yeah 20 minutes go by of me doing that and then do you know it right in front of me probably like five yards away in a tree squirrel runs up the tree sees me sits on this branch and just starts barking at me kicking off so he stands up and I'm like oh no don't tell me I've been stood here watching him for however long it's been now 30 minutes and all of a sudden I've been busted by a squirrel and he's gonna take off running and luckily he stood up the squirrel sort of took off and he stood up and just slowly made his way towards me and right where I'd cut my shooting lane he came in and just happened to turn perfectly broadside to me and that's when I drew. Todd, Keystone Archer, your words were playing around in my head over and over and over again. Don't draw too early, don't draw too early, don't draw too early. So I sat and I waited. He turned perfectly broadside about 10 yards away from me, put his head down. I drew back and just let it fly. And I hit him perfect, double lung. When I field dressed him afterwards, I took the heart and lungs home, so I cooked up the heart and I looked at the lungs and there was a perfect hole through both of them. Couldn't ask for any more, like I say he ran maybe 10 yards, if that, and he dropped and he went down and I heard him roll down the hill and I knew he was dead, he didn't, he didn't move after that, so that was, that would made me happy, not, you know what I mean, like it made me feel good because that's been playing over and over and over and over again in my mind since I've started this. You know, like, am I going to be, when the time comes, am I going to be able to make a good shot? Is that when, am I going to be able to make a good shot, a good shot? And thankfully I did. It was a little high, but luckily, like I say, perfect through both lungs. And he died within seconds, so. Yeah, feels, feels great. I'm looking forward to taking the venison with me out on some overnight trips camping trips i'm looking forward to enjoying that all winter and yeah i'm just couldn't be happier couldn't be happier so thanks guys stay tuned for part three of this where i'm going to be fleshing and tanning the hide myself 
and I'll be preparing the antlers. So if you want to watch that, look out for episode three of this series. And yeah, good day. <laughs>